this is debate three. Uh, this is team five. They will be arguing that material posted on social media should be subject to censorship. Uh, this is team six. They will be arguing that material posted on social media should not be subject to censorship. So should on this side and should not be subject to censorship on this side. <coughs> Five, opening argument. Hi, my name is Tanya Carlisle, and the assignment we were given was material was on social media should be subject to censorship. Webster defined media as the main the main means of mass communication, broadcast and publishing, and the internet regarding collectively. Having all the different types of media out, all these different types of media outlets have molded our society today. The more time passes, the more technology advances. Anyone is able to go on the internet and search for anything they wish for. Personally, if I want to search up something, I go straight to Google and look up and the world, I can see everything about everything. Or I can go to social media like Twitter or Snapchat. The power of the internet is very dangerous and needs to be handled with caution and responsibility. It should not be allowed to be given into the hands of a sensitive of a sensitive mind like a child. I have a seven-year-old nephew and the only way my sister keeps him calm is to give him the phone. But we all, who knows what he actually does on the phone. Yes, he can play games, but she can't monitor him so much where she can't be like breathing over him. He obviously has his faith. And for Christmas this year, he's asking for an iPad. So now he has a lot more freedom than before. To elaborate on our main ideas of media being censored, we will be discussing three subtopics. One is being how influential media is in our society. Two, media's influence <laughs> on children. And finally, the security of secrets. Um, our first point that we want to touch on is the media influence on society. And um, <clears throat> as a community, we are heavily influenced by the media and other sources of information. However, we tend to overlook the fact that there are not only much bias, but also skewed perceptions of events and also reports in the media today. The media does a poor job portraying things as they really, in, really are in order to follow up a sort of convention and to keep their show on air or their papers in the stores. As a result, most of the time we are being fed information that may not be entirely true and sometimes enti entirely baseless. The media has the ability to manipulate its viewers in ways that are often unseen. That being said, it is difficult to give full trust to any news or report on an event let alone base beliefs off something that was skewed so much that it became a whole different story or subject in itself. Driven by money, greed, and popularity, most media outlets are fighting to report what they believe what we want to hear. Not what we really should hear, the truth. Media influence on children. The uh, impressionable young minds can't differentiate between real and make believe the amount of violence shown affects the perception of young children. Emphasis needs to be made on the fact that killing people is illegal anymore. We don't want our children to think that it's cool to be heartless and go and pick out people on the street. The vivid portrayal of violence as a mean of justice gives them a false sense of right and wrong. Hence, the amount of violence the media broadcast can all to be censored at least for the kids. Also, the casual reports towards the topics of sex and pornography is very wrong ideas for young minds. Open advertising, smoking, and alcohol also needs to be curbed. What they see, they learn. And there, there needs to be an age restriction strictly employed with the open media grounds and the news channels and newspapers. Once restrict their portrayal of some topics, keeping in mind the age of the general audience. Uh, last, we're going to touch on the security of secrets. And the past two debates have already talked on it. But just going back to the Edward, Edward Snowden situation, if media were more look, looked over and censored, um, those confidential government secrets wouldn't have gotten out as easily, and they could have got shut down quickly. Um, also, in 2005, there was a event with the Times Magazine, and they admitted delaying their story about their knowing of the NSA's wiretapping from certain individuals. And it goes to show that although there is freedom of press and things along those lines, that just because there is, journalists are using that ability to censor what they're saying. 
you know, what information is getting out into the public. Social media was created with the purpose of allowing people all over the world to express their opinion about topics wherever and whenever. Social media keeps us all connected on many fronts, such as daily news, politics, and current events that happen all over the world. According to Statista.com, in 2017, the number of worldwide social media users reached 1.96 billion and is expected to grow to some 2.5 billion by 2018. Having this free expression allows people to assert their opinions in a timely manner, even if others may not agree. According to psychologist Cian Belloc, having access to social media helps people with psychological issues such as anxiety by giving them the power to speak out and write about topics that they may have a strong opinion about. The First Amendment states that Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for redress of grievances. If censorship is enforced, then individuals' natural rights will be suppressed as well as violated. The mission statement of Twitter, a social media platform designed to let people all over the world connect through written words is as follows. To give everyone the power to create and share ideas and information instantly and without barriers. The key point of this mission statement are the words without barriers. If social media is censored, then how can people efficiently express themselves without barriers? While we acknowledge that some posted material on social media may be explicit, and realize that censorship of such can help to control the spreading of hate and the viewing of sexual content by underage children, the cons of censorship of social media strongly outweigh the pros. There are many positive sides to what free expression can do without being censored. <coughs> to be more specific, according to TeenShield.com, social media can be used to educate young people, can be used as a voice of reason in society, and has helped more people to become creative and innovative. An article in USA Today stated that social media such as Facebook has helped with the reconnecting of biological families from across the world, and the mission statement of Facebook is to give people the power to build community and bring the world closer together, to stay connected with friends and family, and to discover what's going on in the world. Putting censorship barriers on this would not allow people to do exactly what the mission statement wants them to do, connect with others, see what's going on in the world, and express what matters to them. It is argued that the censorship of social media will leave people clueless and dumbfounded. According to debate.org, censoring social media will leave gaps in our perception of the world and what happens in it. Information is what keeps the human mind thinking, understanding, comprehending, and most importantly, knowing. A lot of social media is censored around the news and what is going on in the world, but those are not the only things it is used for. It can also be used to raise awareness for different topics that are important to people. For example, the ALS ice bucket challenge that went viral raised $115 million for the disease, and this all happened because of social media. Social media is an American right, and censoring it would take that fact away. Social media is unfiltered and raw, helping people stay alert and aware about what is going on all over the world. Social media helps to spread joy and links people together in more than <laughs> two ways. Because of these reasons, Social media should not be censored, not now, and not ever. So you touched a little bit on <coughs> All right, so you touched a little bit on people using social media as a source of their news. Well, I agree with that because it is heavily sought to find out information in today's day and age. But at the same time, we also went over multiple examples in class through the ethical scenarios, especially one where there was a miscarried baby found out in front of a dumpster on a college campus, and it was reported in the school newspaper. In that instance, almost everybody in the class agreed that it's something that could have been, the news could have been easily portrayed without the graphic material shown in the picture. So my point being, just because 
just because it may there may be a time lapse in the news that is being expressed, the nature of that news can still be expressed without such graphic material and all that. Um, next, we talked about First Amendment rights, and that kind of goes back to the whole secure secret of security of secrets point that we had. Um, although censorship does restrict does restrict First Amendment rights, and since social media is not government owned, there is no reason for them to interfere. Um, it should still be censored to some to some extent because government secrets could still be they could still be leaked, and it could still pose a threat to our nation's security. You said before there was 1.96 billion people on social media and there's going up to 2.5 billion in 2018. But how many people do you think are under the age of 18 and have not seen graphic content like the like the miscarriage video? Yes, that was on a cash couch, but still it could have been, that paper could have been found anywhere. The thing is we don't want it to be censored to the extent where we don't want you to know anything. We want it to be censored to the extent where we don't want so much graphic information being put out there like the Facebook the Facebook killing that was live that everyone could see. Yeah, it was taken down, but people still saw it. And the, out of young minds, it's just it molds it. Especially, I have a nephew, and he is like a sponge. He just absorbs everything, and it's just scary to think that's out there. According to Ramison.edu, 67% of law enforcement professionals believe that social media helps to solve crimes faster and more effectively. Whether we want to face it or not, social media plays a huge role in the justice system and has helped to do things such as locate a missing person, track down evidence of a suspect, and identify potential terrorist attacks. What makes social media so unique is that it exposes channels of communication and leaves a better trace of people's location and identities. In other words, cops don't have to dig for certain evidence on occasions if social media is involved. To be more specific, ABC.com wrote that officials say that social media site Facebook brought justice to the Steve Steffens case. The shooter in Cleveland who broadcast himself on Facebook Live shooting a man. Because of Facebook, a viewer of the live feed was able to identify Steve Steffens, which led to the cops tracking him down, all because he chose to share it on Facebook. Um, now, Natalia, you mentioned about your nephew, and you all guys also mentioned about having the ability to go on um, Google to search certain things. And um, although we have to take into consideration the sensitive mind of a child, we need to turn this into something positive and educate and inform. Um, parental restrictions, we have that available <laughs> to us, and it prevents children from being exposed to what they shouldn't be. However, we don't want to curb it, but we want to educate them from it. Um, children at that age begin to um, experiment and go ahead out with their friends and begin to learn things on their own. So if we have that parental guidance, we can educate them from things that are exposed on Facebook like smoking, alcohol, sex, and things like that. We can turn it into something positive and educate our children so that they don't have to experiment on their own. Also doesn't mean that the 
government uses it for its own personal gain by repressing the city. Ours is a democratic nation, yet it has more citizenship than most nations. That's the irony. Material on social media should not be subject to censorship. It's imperative that we uphold our nation's values and the First Amendment. Like everything, uncensored media does have its pros and cons, but at the end of the day, social media users control who they follow and who follows them. And it allows its users to self-censor their feed to deter content they may find explicit. Even if social media did not have a self-censorship feature, Uncensored media can expose corruption in our government, help crime investigations, spread sex education and awareness, and has the power to save lives. As members of society, we have an obligation to do what's best for the greater good, and uncensored media helps us honor that obligation. Thank you guys. That concludes our debate for today.